The sea contains a wide variety of ecosystems. One of the more intriguing but lesser known of these are the sargassum beds found in the open ocean. You've probably run across sargassum washed up on your favorite beach. What you may not know is that it can also be found far from shore floating in mats that may be miles long. Over 100 species have been identified using sargassum beds for shade, protection, or food. Some are transient, some live their whole lives there. We want to take a look at one in particular, Portuna sei, the sargassum crab. So it turns out that sargassum mats, while being interesting in diverse habitats, are not very stable. Storms, even moderate waves, even a pod of lively dolphins can totally disrupt the community. This prompted questions by Lauren E. West and W. Randy Brooks in their 2018 study published in the journal Symbiosis. They wanted to know, how do these communities reform? How do they reestablish after disruption? Or indeed, how do they establish in the first place? They chose sargassum crabs for the study because sargassum crabs are found just about everywhere you find sargassum mats, and these crabs can use both visual and chemical cues to find their way around. The question is, which will they use, or will it be some combination of the two to help them find the sargassum mat again? For the chemoreception experiments, a series of tanks was assembled. The crab was placed in what was called a choice tank, and above, hidden from view, were two tanks. One had in it two of the kind of sargassum species that are commonly found off the coast of Florida, as well as a kind of seagrass commonly found mixed in with sargassum mats, and the other tank was just seawater. Gravity allowed these two tanks to drain into the choice tank into partitioned areas of the choice tank, and then they watched to see which the crab would choose. It didn't seem to matter size, sex, age of the crab. They consistently, significantly chose to go to the chamber that had the chemical cues coming into it. For the visual part of the test, tanks were again assembled, but this time the crab was placed in a choice tank, and on either side were two tanks that they could enter by choice. One contained a visual cue, and one contained, again, only seawater, nothing else. The visual cue might be one of the sargassum weeds species that, that uh, were mentioned in the previous part of the experiment, the seagrass, or even an artificial seagrass. Consistently, the crabs chose to go to the tanks that had habitat. It didn't matter which kind of sargassum or even grass or even artificial cue. They always went to the tank that had something in it. And it should be mentioned that these sargassum weeds and the grasses were sealed so that there were no chemical cues entering the crab's chamber. They preferred all habitats, even artificial ones, to the empty tank. The researchers concluded that the crabs then can use either chemical or visual cues, visual cues at least within two or three meters and if the light is right, but they're probably using some combination. The significance of this study is that it's part of a wider group of studies that examine how communities form in the ocean, including in the deep, wide open spaces of the deep ocean. If we're going to protect habitats, we're going to protect the members of communities, it stands to reason that we need to know how those communities form in the first place.